Hello, this is Morgan Freeman. Now you're probably wondering, what's Morgan Freeman doing punching Rick Overton's time up like this? Well, maybe it's because the sun doesn't set in the same place in the sky every day. Maybe it's because I'm growing old. And maybe it's because I don't care for Rick Overton or his voice career. In fact, any opportunity I can take to step in and use up some of his voice work time, I will. Even if he's going out for the most inconsequential small cartoon three-line part, he's going to sit there on the sofa and see me sitting across from him with the same sides. And you are listening to Storyworthy. Welcome to the Story Worthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannes Finn. Welcome to Story Worthy. My name is Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannes Finney and we're coming to you from the Playboy Mansion Grotto. Yes, we are grotto side you on know, our chaise lounges. Honestly. I am wearing a 1919 uh, bathing suit, which is more clothes than I actually was wearing before I got into the bathing suit because it's huge. It's <laughs> that's very not large. a bad look for you. I'll be oh, honest no, no, with you. No, no, no. I need the vertical stripes in, Listen, in when I'm swimming. If I were honestly, if I were to go in that grotto, I would be in like in a full on, uh, like a, like a, like a, a wetsuit. A wetsuit. I would be because gear, yeah. I can't imagine what is floating around in that pool. We don't have to imagine because we're here. I mean, besides Bill Fear Maher. Of mind. Let's look. Oh my God. There's teeth. There are loose teeth floating in the grotto. The reason why Hannes wants to come uh, from the grotto tonight is because our topic tonight is orgies. And I guess we're just, <laughs> we're right away, we're jumping to the assumption that there are orgies in the grotto. Is that what you're saying? I would guess that if there's not an orgy in the grotto, something's wrong with the world. Like there's an orgy in the grotto 95% of the time. I don't, I don't, I totally don't agree with you. And I've had people, I've had friends, I've known people that have gone to the Playboy Mansion. They say it's very, very boring, that it's, uh, that it's completely out of date. It almost is like when you go into Graceland and, and Elvis's old home and it's like, this is where he lived. Like, this is it. Like you, you think it's going to be better and bigger and more opulent. But in fact, it's just this tired old man with six blondes around him. And it's just, it's like a caricature. Well, it's kind of like when you and I years ago did that dub of a porno for Hustler. Yes. Uh, you're in the... <laughs> Rick Overton is yes, looking at us like, up, what like, what did I get myself into? Yeah, what we did is dubbed the parts of a porno that no one ever listens to. None of the, fuck me, none of the, oh, uh, it was all like, hello, my cousin is here from Paris. Well, because, and it was like a because all porno. the groaning and everything, that is in any language, right. as you but know. But why did we have to dub the part that everyone skips well, into I don't English? Know. This I, is I my was question. into my character, actually. Yes. The name of the film was Ballbusters 2, if you want to pick that up. And I played this really cute blonde. Get off my balls! Well, oh, we weren't talking about that on the air. I right. played a really cute blonde, and um, the only thing I had to say that was a little bit dirty, and you go, let's, let's face it, it was, yeah. it was flat out filthy. I had to say... <laughs> Turn around and fuck me in the ass. Okay, so that was bad. Okay, okay that was bad. By that, the way, I believe your line was turn me over and fuck me in the ass because if you're saying to me, turn around, what then did I'm I facing say? Her, you said turn I around and fuck me it. in the ass. I can't, even yeah, the I say French I can't even say cannot accomplish this. The point even the man is, with the biggest piece in the world the cannot point is, go all the way around the world in the other direction. Other than that, my lines were very demure. You know, like you said, yes. it was like, you know, honey, your cousin's here and where should we sleep? And she should be on the couch and I have an extra toothbrush. It was like that. Yeah, and I had um, I I did manage to get one pun in there because I was like the cat you know sleazy cab driver in this. I'm new in town. I don't have a job, and I said I get a job for you. And the next thing you know, my character is getting a blowjob in on the a woods. Log. Yes, the guys naked from the waist down, sitting on a log, a log. which doesn't seem comfortable, getting a blowjob on his uncircumcised French penis. Ugh. But we digress. You anyway, know, we're not when you think French of uncircumcised penis, you think Rick Overton. That's what I That's say. That's what I'm saying. Tonight, we're coming at you from a completely different angle. It's orgies. It's all yes. orgies all the time. Yes. Uh, before we start, I do want to say that, uh, Hannes, as you know, Storyworthy is now an official selection in the L.A. Podfest, which is happening October 4th to the 6th in Santa Monica. Right. Once they hear this, they may change their minds, <laughs> but we don't more know. more information, including other podcasts that will be there and stuff like that, hotel information, you can go to LAPodfest.com. That's where you'll find that information. Right. And just a reminder... We are on Stitcher.com, of course, and we are on Twitter. It's at StoryWorthy and at HannesPH for me directly. 
and that's story worthy for Christine. Okay, and let's just get right into what I found from a men's magazine online today about how to host a sex orgy. Men's magazine, I've heard that term since because the 70s. Because th- there are definitely things you want to think about. Uh, number one, who's coming? You know, first things first. Who is coming? How do you, you need avoid to figure jokes about who's coming? Who right? is invited? No, you well, <laughs> good, <laughs> honest. Uh, you know, but who are you going Orgasm to invite? Orgasm puns are my specialty. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, no matter how hot somebody might be, you definitely want to stay away from people that are repressed or prudish. That makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah. Except that those are the people who really. That's like when you. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that because you see the. You know, you talk to a girl and she's like all like, "Woo, I'm wild," and I talk about sex all the time. And then that woman, she doesn't have sex with you. Yeah. But the one who just has a little too much brandy. That's the one you so want to hit on. That's the one where she's just like, well, I don't know. Maybe I think- should turn around and fuck me in the ass. <laughs> but- <laughs> now, listen, do you think this is an invite or is this a Facebook page? What, what are we I talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one because. Uh, well, we're yeah, tweeting who, it for sure. Well, yeah, now, yeah, nowadays, I wonder you would have to tweet. It would you just could be actually, like. You can actually get people to um, send you photos. Of course, you don't know if they would be. Real photos. If you get a release signed first. Well, I'm talking about to to say, hey, I want to be in your orgy. Here's my photo. Okay, l- let me let me say this. Number two, if you're going to host an orgy, you want to buy good porn movies. Uh, now, sometimes, uh, especially first timers, they're nervous when they first join an orgy, and so uh, watching a porn movie is a good way to break the ice. You don't want to have to sound on. You just <laughs> just the pictures, moving pictures. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. You don't yeah. have to comment. I'm just, just I'm going no, down the I'm list. Just, uh, I, and this I, isn't from me. This is from Men's Health Magazine. Men's, Num- <laughs> number men's three, Health. Number three, have condoms available. Shouldn't it be available. Men's Disease Magazine? That have seems like it would be a better. Have condoms available. This is ABC's. Sure, This sure. is Mickey Mouse. I, uh, Christine, have you actually done this or not? You just read about this. You know, this. that's a funny thing you should say to Hannes. Yeah. I've done a lot of funny things in my life. Sure, I bet. I have never considered an orgy. Like, it has never even crossed my mind. Do you know what I mean? It seems, yeah, it seems like a lot of, it's a, it's enough work to get one person into bed. Yeah. You're trying to get like 12 people. You're like, oh, that is a lot of egos and a lot of, like, that's a lot of people. If you're just, get- I, you know, it's hard enough to just throw a party. Right, right. In LA, you're, you're like, oh, you clean your house like a maniac and you sit out all your hors d'oeuvres and you tell people to be there at eight. Nobody fucking gets there till 930 because it's fucking Hollywood. I know. And so for an hour and a half, you're like, nobody's coming. The dip is going to be spoiled. Right. So imagine if you've got lube getting dry. Right. You would it's be disgusting. very, by the time they get there, you don't want to fuck them to, because you're you so pissed off. Clean the house, clean the sheets. Then you have to decide where is the sex going to happen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So are there mattresses just strewn about? Do you have private rooms? Right. Didn't we have, we saw a movie many years ago, a documentary. What was oh, the yeah. name of that documentary? Uh, it was like a single white people in Orange County, remember? Yes, having orgies. And having orgies and they would come to the party and they and would they, all yeah. be naked and they'd be going, they'd show them going through the food line. You know, so they're dishing out potato right, salad, the buffet and, they're and then they're like they're there, you know, and, and right. it's all naked, and right at fucking, the height of the food. And then later they're naked and talking about traffic, which I thought was the funniest part. <laughs> it's like you always end up talking about traffic, even if you just fucked a stranger <laughs> and a stranger's wife. You're like, Everybody's so did you guys take the four hundred five? Because I that was I hate the four hundred five. It's such a. And uh, here's the number one thing you want to do, folks, if you're if you are hosting an orgy, relax, please relax. Your guests will notice if you're uncomfortable, yeah. and they will be too. You know, if you're enjoying the festivities, Hannes, they follow suit. Ah, well, that's impossible because I enjoy nothing. But the enthusiasm realize, trickles down. I, you know what they left off there? God, the most important thing would be drugs and liquor. How about relaxing people liquor? for sex? I don't even know liquor, her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm having a party. Liquor in the front, poker in the back. Ladies Thank you. and gentlemen. I appear uh, all week, tip your wages. Yeah, if you don't get people hammered on something, yeah. orgies are going to be like, you don't want to be, you don't want, because if you get high on something, you have an excuse for your behavior. You know what, no, I never would have done that. Yeah. I, I don't but, know. I, I don't even know how to answer it. Have you ever gotten close? Because like, I've had some situations I've, where there could be like a bisexual thing going on. And like, I've had experiences. I went to Australia backpacking. Yeah, Rick, can you come I back know. next week? Because I just want to hear about that. <laughs> no, but no. I mean, like, have you ever had the situation? Like, I've had some things like, okay, this could get, you know, sort of kinky, but never more than three people. Right, right. I haven't, uh, no, haven't really got close to the three people thing. <laughs> Um, but I'm sure that you oh, have. I'm the crazy one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I fucking no. crossed the line. You're the attractive one. Duh. Also, you're a girl, and <laughs> girls also are, are always being propositioned with things that, like, if I was going to have a three way, it would have to be my idea. I'm a guy. 
I'm not going to have gone out with some girl who goes, you know what? And if she does, then she just wanted to sleep with that girl in the first place. And I'm like the, I'm like the liquor. I like, because uh, I'm like, I'm the excuse for her behavior because she really wanted to fuck women in the first place. And then after she has sex with me, oh, she never has gosh. sex well, with men Well, there's a again. lot, there's a lot to think about. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. And let's so just you've hope you've never that had a threesome? I've never, no, I didn't say that. I oh, said I okay. never had an orgy. Okay, so there was a threesome. I said I didn't get close to an orgy. I said I've gotten, you know. I got news for you. Threesome is orgy adjacent. <laughs> it's like living in Los Angeles as your Hollywood adjacent. Ladies well, and gentlemen, you're orgy adjacent. we're going to move right along here. We've got a storyteller who hopefully he's got, I, I think he's got a story about orgies. I mean, unless he just wanted to hear us talk about that. I don't yeah, know. I would put it past him. He's quite the perv. All right, folks, wherever you are, stay tuned because Rick Overton is on his way here. Next week on Storyworthy, we have comedic writer and performer Brian Finkelstein. That's right. And I'd be talking about having a panic attack at Gelson's and maybe my dick doesn't work. I don't know. Listen, find out. Shut up. That's next week on Storyworthy. More pizza? And we're back. We have left the grotto uh, and we have gone into the kitchen. I have ordered <laughs> um, some bratwurst uh, and uh, and Christine, of course, is having a nice green salad and a being move. served by a naked uh, transsexual. So I don't know, Hannes. I just don't know. Uh, all right, you guys. The uh, good- my name is Ed. The good news is Rick Overton is here. And Richard, I believe his real name is Richard Overton. He is an Emmy Award winning writer and an actor and a comedian. His writing and credits include Dennis Miller Live. And his acting credits include Seinfeld, Dinner for Schmucks, uh, The Informant, Groundhog Day, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Alias, and Lost. And his podcast, Overview, is very popular. Hannes, have you heard Overview? Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Uh, And you can find that on iTunes. Uh, And you can also find more information on Rick at rickoverton.net. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, put your hands together for Rick Overton. Thank you. Thanks. Great to be here. Uh, you got, it was hilarious. You were torturing me <laughs> when I was watching you do that riff before. I was like, oh, I want to join that. That was fun. I wanted to have join the word orgy you were enjoying. It was a, <laughs> become the awkward third guy. Excuse me. Uh, do you mind if I... Uh, uh, either participate or put on these night goggles like <laughs> Buffalo Bill and just watch with a brandy snifter and a cigar. <laughs> what could be less attractive than that? <laughs> <laughs> you kids go on ahead. <laughs> Is my cigar stinky? <laughs> we live in a in a different age now. Sure, I guess there's a lot of Something swinging going on somewhere, mostly in the really strict Westboro community kind of <laughs> Christian people. That's where that compressed coil spring blows open, you know? <laughs> they all got the spank dungeons going on in that one weird locked room in the basement, you know? <laughs> all of them. They, that, uh, the, uh, the rumor is that it's just all right-wing people that need to be pounded like a fucking uh. you know, pinata and a spin harness on the ceiling, you know? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, and you know what, the reason I, I'm, I'm not sure it's such a great idea to make it to a swinger party in the 21st century is this, because everyone has a m- tiny television production studio in their hand, in their pocket. And they say, remember no cameras. Okay. I'm just going to text that to a friend here. Yeah. yeah. What is that? You got an iPhone? Yeah. You got a camera. And I just, the running the risk there's like footage of you because anyone can film anything at any time. It is a big brother that we're talking about. This is little brother. Little brother's going to fuck everything up with, the, with his cameras everywhere, you know? And so uh, the innocent days of like the 70s when I was in early days of comedy and after a show, they go, hey, we're going down to this party. We are? Oh, okay. I, uh, I remember once we were, I was working out in uh, just outside of Phoenix in Tempe back in like it was 80, 81. And uh, it was a club called Chuckles. And this is one of those subdivides that hadn't been turned into a complete housing complex yet. So there's lots of things that go road forks off to just two sticks with a red flag on it into dirt. You know, later there'll be housing here. And there's the main road that goes way, 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 way over the hill. There's one glowing area. And you get closer and it's a horseshoe uh, building, a double decker with a pool in the middle of it. 
and that's so far from it, that everyone is a party swinger at the entire complex. You kind of move there based on that on that goal and purpose. And so we uh, we were working at the club, and uh, let's say the comedians' names were Adam and Jack, just to protect whoever at this point. Uh, uh, we were the three guys. I was the headliner, and they were the uh, opener and uh, uh, middle. And the owner says, hey, guys, you know, after the show, the Ferret sisters were here. They really enjoyed it. And you are invited. And we went, invited to the Ferret sisters? Oh, no, no, they're, no, they're cute girls, but one of them owns a ferret. Oh, 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 okay. And so, no, 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 don't worry, man. Don't you worry. Don't worry. <laughs> The Ferret Sisters aim to please. And so we went out driving, driving in the back of the uh, manager's Z car where there's too many of us, so the hatch is open. There's an exhaust leak, and it was good. The hatches are just fucking dummies with limbs sticking out the back, you know, shit-faced morons going out to this party. I got my twin Corbells. Ricky traveled with his twin Corbells. No, no, these are my twin Corbells. You get your own cor complete bottles of Corbell. So, you know... Ricky Two Corks from New Jersey. Hey, here's Ricky Two Corks. And so uh, we go, uh, we finally get to the complex, and we're going up the stairs, and uh, uh, I'd been to a couple of fun, goofy parties in New York City earlier, but this is the first time I've seen anything like this. They, those parties were just good. They weren't funny. <laughs> I just got fucked a lot and then uh, went to sleep. You know, it was not really... <laughs> You know, it's not good. It's not good. The jokes aren't good when everything goes great, you know. Two Jews walk into a bar, recognize each other, have a drink, go home. Boo, get off. There's no conflict. We hate you for no conflict. And so uh, this one, though, was a little more odd. So we're going up the stairs, and we're greeted by a girl, a cute girl, who had this sort of comforter on. And she throws a ballet leg up on the railing, and ba da da da, opens it up naked. I'm guessing this is the place. So we uh, we go in, and there's a couple of you know on the sofa bobbing asses and uh, legs sticking out, and going, this is definitely the fucking place. So and there's people looking to meet people. These are the comedians from the club. Oh hey hey, what's it like? So I, I met the girl who was a ticket taker at the local uh, cinema. And uh, uh, the fellas broke off with the other people that they could hook up with. And uh, I have I had sex with her uh, twice. And then I'm drunk. I'm fucking, I'm done. I'm in my 20s. I'm still fucking done. That's it. Two times and I'm done because I'm drunk and coming twice is like that amount of fluid. And, you know, you should bring it into the shop and then top up again before you go back on the road, you know. So uh, I'm down two quarts. And uh, so now I'm pretty tired. Now the girl that greeted us at the top. Now we're just sitting in the pool, and I'm, I'm uh, a bottle and a half in on the Corbells. And so I'm just sort of blur, good day, glorg, and splurg, blah, looking around at the surreal circus around me with my arms up at the edge of the pool. And that girl dives in, and she pops up, whoop, dolphins up in front of me, and she goes, do you ever have aqua head? And I went, uh... Um, before I could talk, because there's no blood in my brain, and I'm just a moron at this point. And she goes, Aquahead. And I went, uh uh, boop, and down she goes. And then suddenly there's this big, bloop, 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 these bubbles. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And it's really bad. Hey, 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 bloop, 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 bloop. And she goes, Pah. she goes up, Aquahead. What do you think? No, nah, that's great. That's great. Let, let's get, let's come on. Let's get out of the pool. <laughs> and so, and she, uh, she was, I'm just, you know, I want to brag and say I could get it up one more time. I couldn't. I was just pounded. I was done. I was a done dummy at that point. And uh, she tried and tried and tried, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I just was done. And so I'm sitting there, and now I'm looking at it back in the bedroom there, drying off, and there's the club manager sleeping with the girl I was just having sex with. And it's kind of that weird, out-of-the-'70s brandy snifter mentality of... Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking at him, just his ass just bump, 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 going up and down into her. And she looks over and kind of does the eyebrows like, what can I say? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he looks over. He looks over at me. And, I, and so I just to break the weirdness, I go, so how were the numbers tonight? Were they good? Both shows was good? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Second show wasn't as good as the first, but they're a couple. We, we made the nut, you know? And then, you know, she looked like, okay, everything's fine. Everything, you know, because what what do I owe her or me? She don't owe me anything, you know. So uh, this was, uh, 
And so finally, the girl comes back uh, that was very determined to get some, one more round out of me, and she, she, goes, uh, and she, she goes, yeah, no? You want to see my ferret? Oh, yeah. Change the subject. I go, yes. Show me the ferret. So she goes to the cage, pulls this ferret out in a cage, and unhitches it and hands him to him. And he goes, oh, he's kind of cute. Uh, yeah, so he's friendly, right? He goes, oh, he loves people. And there's like a little sweat drop on my nose, but it's so loaded with like alcohol and sugar. He goes, lick, lick, <clears throat> and just bites into the end of my nose. And I stand up. <laughs> And there's blood streaming down my face and this long necktie of a weasel hanging down from my face. And I'm like, ah! And I go, wee! And I just give him kind of a rib squeeze to make him let go. And now I'm holding him. He's biting me all over the outside of my hand because there's like, they're snake long and they can whip around and just keep them. So I'm just all covered in bites. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to see medical papers on your fucking ferret right now! And... <laughs> She uh, could not produce any rabies history <laughs> shot paperwork for me. So there we are, loaded back into the Z car, all the dummies and the limbs, like riding back into the sunrise again in the morning, totally hungover. I got a big round, those, the round Band-Aid, that when it fills with blood, it's like the clown with the red clown nose going home, you know? And I just picture the doctor coming out of the, uh, the, the lab going, well, Mr. Owen, I don't know how you did it. You, you completely dodged herpes, but you got rabies. And so we're going to have to put you down. Where was this orgy? Was it in Tempe. A, in Tempe? Oh, in the, just in varied apartments. Sometimes you could go off to separate people's apartments and have sex, but there was a central one where more people were doing stuff. What year was this? I was 80 or 81. So this is before AIDS or right at the same time? Had you heard of it? Do you remember hearing? Uh, at the time, I had not. I had no. not, right. No, but I've been tested, so it's, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I dodged all the... It's insane. I'm like, fucking Neo, the amount of bullets I've dodged. Was <laughs> Wow, really? Now, are you saying you've slept with a lot of dodgy women or just just people in Drugs general? Drugs and, uh, like... You know, I don't know that. I wouldn't say they're all dodgy. I'd say some of the circumstances were dodgy, but it was at a time when there was... I just... I, I, I don't know if they're isolated areas or what. But it, it, no, it, it was didn't. Free I mean, love, I got tested, was... and then it was okay. I was. I came out of the era in the '70s where there was a lot of fucking going on, right? You know, and you were in New York, and it's up and coming comedians, and so you yeah. were sort of was, famous at the time. It was. A, it was one of the things when it was just starting to become like a second version of rock and roll and popularity. Right. You could start to harvest some of the advantages the of that ever so briefly before the TV just burnt it out. And yeah, you could go yeah. home and go click to get it now. The, the out going out part isn't as special as it used to be. Who were you with at that particular that particular party? The other comedian you were on stage with, or the, the middle and the the opener, right? And yeah, apparently right. the whole the staff guys. of the all comedy club, all three guys were there. Yeah, do you know? Remember and the club their manager name? too. Do you remember their that's names? The four guys. Those guys. I do. Anybody that is still around? We're just gonna say. Come on, Jack and Adam. Jack and Adam, but really, yes, you're talking you about. Jack I don't know Nicholson. who's married, who's not. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm protecting old friends. Okay, see, I think that's, that's fair. By the, the way, the, the, second, you, the last old, names won't I'm... give you nothing for it. You don't get a big punch laugh for it, <laughs> yeah, and they'll go. Yeah. They're going to be on the phone going, "What the fuck yeah, did you do to me, man?" Yeah, why would you tell them that? But thanks for getting me divorced, motherfucker. Is that the only time you went there? <laughs> no, I went there four times. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah, because I mean, the, this... the, the Ferret Sisters didn't always show up. Yeah. Sometimes you just got, maybe, but in those days, it was almost impossible not to have one lone shot per, per weekend, you know? Wow, no kidding. Yeah, well, yeah but I was road, remember, and days. My, my days on the road, which were not nearly as extensive as yours, and by the way, just late enough that AIDS was everywhere, and it's like, nope, 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 nope. But um, uh, there was usually, there was the waitress who slept with the opener, and she'd always, always go, the oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this with you. Right. And then she goes, I'd like to open with something I call the Kirkenbauer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He <laughs> is <laughs> making, <laughs> wow. He's making gestures. So, there, yeah, the one, the, one would always sleep like with the opener. Sandwiches. One would always sleep with the middle. I see. And then, like, the, bar, the bartender, head bartender, she would always sleep with the headliner. But it was never, like, no, but none of these people would sleep with, like, the metal one week and the headliner the next week. It was some sort of weird consistent. regimental it was class known. system. Class system, yeah. What was that aqua head all about? I mean, did that work? Because you'd already no. said you'd had two, you'd had sex no, twice it didn't before. Work. That's it the didn't. whole problem. It was startled the shit out of me. Could it, it like, have worked? 
I don't know. It's one of those things that you read it in a novel, like yeah, Shades of Grey, and it sounds like fucking hot. It, if I'm on the edge of coming, that might work. But otherwise, it's like some. It's too it's much. Like, it's like one of those rides yeah, where stuff. mostly it just slammed and hurt your spine as it's going around the curves and corners. The right. ride messes your back up. Yeah. It's not fun. It's but it looks awesome when you're watching. Sex. That's what yeah, it is. yeah. The hard whap whap ride. It's you know, like even Sex in the Shower, Sex in the Jacuzzi, never quite as comfortable no. as it appears. No, it Sex underwater kind of just dries yeah. the whole operation up. It's yeah, weird. right. Exactly. Something it's wet that. dries it up. And that would Duh. that seems like a complete contradiction of what should happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's because we've been watching movies where the most beautiful people in the world have sex in a shower that's steamy and it's great. No, it's I like haven't watched those movies. What are you watching? Any, you know, I'm just saying it looks. That's one of the things. Like sex in a bathtub, sex. Oh, in I a, see. They look good on screen, but in real life, you're like the whole time you're thinking, I'm gonna slip and break a hip. That's what I'm going to do. We could, there's a bed right here. Can we just fuck in the bed like God intended? Do we have to be with the soap and the tile? Over the, the pool a, table. Over the pool table. I'll never get that out of the felt now. Did you yeah, ever exactly. have a long distance, I mean, not a long, not a long distance, but a long term <laughs> relationship in the 70s? I mean, did, I did. They, did they stick in the 70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. They would have an in, an in between. And have you been married? No. And you never got married. That seems no, interesting. I've lived with, I lived with but the, the old phrase is uh, women. I uh, can't, can't live, live with them, them and they you, can't live with me. Can't live so, with you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right. owning half of it. I realize, you know, but right now I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm settling down a lot. And Wait. so the reason I'm talking about this is I was just looking through old notes and old jokes and I was like, that's like a whole other me back there. As, wow. you know, back in that era, I'm, I'm glad I got that stuff in. It's kind of lucky. Say what you will, it was fucking lucky. Right. And uh, yeah. I wouldn't trade those stories in for nothing. So no, that's was, a good story. Uh, it was all happened. And, and did, I, you, did you go through the cocaine thing in the 80s? Uh, you know, I did briefly when they were paying you in coke back yeah. in the 70s. <laughs> Club would pay and cook. I'd go down and work the cellar door across on the Exorcist steps in, wow. in uh, Georgetown, in Georgetown, you know, and opening up for rock groups and for different people. And uh, they would uh, hold up, uh, you know, like a little, a little bit of cash or do 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 little baggy. Little I'd, bag. Oh, of like... I don't know. It's so I. You just cut the middleman out. I might as well just go to that. And uh, that's when I was rent was cheap enough, and I could make enough with other gig after gig because right. that's when the boom was just beginning to ramp up and there were more opportunities for comics than comics. It was like the RAF in 1940 wow. and they were starting to put teenagers in spitfires because they ran out of adults in the sky, you know? Wow, well that was a really good time to be there. It was yeah. perfect timing. I remember it's cocaine, strange luck. for some reason I always remember they would take a little corner of a magazine at like a glossy magazine page and then they would wrap the coke in there. Do you remember that? Yeah, sure. Why'd they do that? Well, because it, it came off the page. I, I only like, worked clubs yeah. in Wisconsin shiny the paper doesn't shiny hold it. Whereas news paper you got chisel chin and half of yeah. you're snorting half of its paper but it never got bad for you like you're not like looking yeah for it totally coke. did but did it oh, like, no i mean I, I couldn't afford it to for it to become a huge addiction right i got did it ever, when like, i got it but look for it on the bathroom uh, floor in a shitty no, restaurant no see that's a good thing and, it's, and the more it made my dick cease to function the more i was starting to really mistrust it and not like it and by the time belushi died i said that's the sign from the universe splash into the toilet goodbye wow. motherfucker no kidding you killed you killed one of my friends and heroes and now uh, and you're, you're killing my cock i'm done with you now wait a minute belushi <laughs> Fuck you. was at the time he was at the chateau marmont in a, in a bungalow by the pool yeah but it wasn't a coke overdose was it it was a speedball it was half coke half heroin i see so it the was system trying his to figure heart. out what direction it to go it blew his heart it blew his heart out is that right? Yeah, was, they found him in the mungalow. He had died in the night. It wasn't yeah. a Because half of it was the coke. I mean, and I'm not saying that heroin doesn't kill people, too. I've never did it, but... Yeah, I never uh, had that uh, done that either. How do you think you avoided that? How did you avoid uh, that? I don't like needles. No, I hear what you're saying. Well, now, like you know, heroin... Stuck. You don't see one piercing on me, not one tattoo. Don't no like tattoos? him. I've been stabbed. I don't want to get stuck. Yeah, no tattoos. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's hard to get. find anybody who has no tattoos. I don't have a single Well, past one. a certain I what age, I, I mean... You know, what like, am I showing here? What, who I don't know. Look, look what, you yeah. just told me this orgy story that you had. Well, and back I'd then, never, sure. Well, sure, they had tattoos then, too. It wasn't yeah, big by the way, then. I have well, one question. This is more just, recent. Well, I just want to go back to the orgy for one second. I just... When you were bit <laughs> by the ferret and it was hanging off your nose, were you naked at that moment? Mm, uh, no. Nah, because I, I imagine in, you were, and it's much better. I was in my underwear. And uh, just sort of <laughs> T-shirt and underwear. I was like, I don't know why I covered my dick up. Yeah, I was like, not... but because I think once you had it big, you don't want everyone to see the other version anymore. Oh well, well that might be. There might be some ego thing you behind that, that, right? Fer I Stupid didn't even know kids ferrets stuff. were like popular then. I thought ferrets came like I late eighties. Had yeah. you ever even seen one before? I had just, you know, I'd seen minks on uh, uh, 
Johnny Carson's shoulder when the guy would bring it. And this is a mink, Johnny, and he's very friendly. So I thought they were all friendly. And then he would pee know. on him, and Johnny would get that look ah. and look to his slave yeah. camera like, oh. Yeah, just that long hold, slow burn look as the stain just spreads out on right. the shirt. And he would act surprised every single time, like, I can't believe it. Now, uh, make sure to give him a lot of liquids before he gets on my shoulder. And and who was it? Uh, was it Terry Gar that had the cat on her lap? And he said, uh, Zsa Zsa I... Gabor, that was a uh, famous, Zsa supposedly Zsa Zsa Gabor. Gabor. And he said, may I pet your pussy? No, she said, do you want to pet my pussy? Oh, yeah. And, and, she said And that. he said, well, sure. You just move the goddamn cat. <laughs> oh, there you go. Come on, honest. Yes. That may or may not have ever happened, but I prefer to believe uh, that it did happen. Uh, but, uh, uh, Groucho got away with a cigar. Yeah, what was that about the... Uh, a woman the, had like a lot of kids, I don't know, eight, nine kids, and he said, ma'am, I like my cigar, but I take it out every once in a while. Oh, no, she said, no, wait, wait, the, no, the sorry, setup is, she says, well, I love my husband. He goes, well, I love my cigar, but I take it out of the garage once in a while. Out of my, yeah, I take, yeah, it, out I my take it in my mouth once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nice, nice. I wonder nice. if he ever got aqua head. <laughs> from, this whole from, aqua uh, head, I'm going to be dreaming about this. I can't even get the past. Don't bother with it. It's I a catastrophe. It's it a doesn't catastrophe. work unless he's most of the way I'm, there and any touch would set it off. I you know, see. He's got to be hair trigger for that. So I'm work. just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. Yeah, I'm not going to put it in my bag of tricks. No, life's too short to I put have a no dump tricks. any time into that. Yeah, yeah besides what you got to have like a private pool or be at an orgy. You can't be like at the, you know, at that Super 8 motel in uh, San Bernardino, right, you know, honey. getting blown at the pool, yeah. in the pool. There's no way to submerge into the tub enough without snapping your own neck. Have <laughs> you ever done the internet dating thing, Rick? No. I have not done that either. Uh, and I was wondering if they might, they probably have sites that would invite, or, you know, like orgy.com, match.com. I don't, uh, that, there's a site for everything. I suppose there is. Yeah, now yeah. there is. The one I really like, by the way, is christianmingle.com. <laughs> Because literally their slogan is, find God's match for you. And I'm like, those are big words. You should have to prove that yeah. God wrote on a tablet that he would help this site. You, you know, know what I think we should do, Hannes? Yeah. We should go undercover. <laughs> I'll join ChristianMingle.com. Then I get some like a little lipstick cameras, right. whatever. I take the guys on the I'll date. I'll join and let's Ashley just Madison. Push I'll do a little aqua head or whatever I have to do. Let's sure. push him and see I'm how converting. Christian he is. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. I'm let's just right see now. how Christian we're talking about. How much can I <laughs> mingle <laughs> before he's not so I'm Christian? I'm going to Google aqua head. I just want to see if anything comes up. <laughs> go ahead. In the meantime, let me ask Rick Overton about your your podcast overview. It's relatively new. Relatively new. And and this is really great. You you interview your guests at Greenblatt's Deli. Sometimes. Or I go to their home, or they come down to the studio, or we go wherever in their car. I don't care. As long as that Zoom recorder works and I can get, get what they have on their minds together. And we deconstruct what they do. We take it apart like laying out a hanky and take apart a wristwatch and show you how it comes apart and goes back together. It's, it's mostly designed for to inspire young people to follow along in the art. I'm very determined to see uh, that the things we do perpetuate, and and you don't have what you do if you're not helping nurture the next generation of it. It will wow. disintegrate within your own hands while you're watching it. If its own next generation isn't feeding back the other stuff you need, I love that. Yeah, I recently yeah. saw a tweet from Steve Martin to Patton Oswalt, and he said something like "passing the torch" or something, and it yeah, kind it of gives me that idea that yeah, it's perpetuating. It has to be. And like your friend Jonathan Winters, who recently passed away. That's right. Same thing. That's absolutely Passing the torch. It. And you had just interviewed him in January. I got the last interview. Wow. I didn't mean for it to be. I sure didn't. I was looking forward to going back and back and back and back and back. He's the father of my imagination. And you went and to I Santa Barbara? And I lost a second father. You went to Santa Barbara? Yeah. Uh-huh. And you got yeah. to see his home? That's where it is. Wow. Yeah. And it's a giant playground. And he, he, he imparted a secret, a trade secret for, yes, his body was... Uh, infirm and hard to get around in, and his diaphragm slightly weakened the voice. But it is—it was a crystalline and perfect mind on top of it all. Wow! So I imagine there's a pain to watching. My mother went through that. Her mind was perfect as her body disintegrated. Some people, it's the opposite. Right. Body's fine, and the mind is going. I—I I can't judge which is worse. Right. Those were my experiences, but uh, the privilege of having that mind in the state that it was, and to have been there for it. That's, 
That's like lightning strike. You know, uh, lotto ball winner luck. Some of I his can't uh, his I can't imagery, I was there. yeah, of when he was a child and his parents and the way he was treated and I guess in a way abused. I he mean, created his own friends. It's in just a friendless unbelievable, but it, yeah, in a friendless environment. And he, but it's just like his memory is just perfect. It, it's perfect. I, it, my father is eighty now, and my dad says I can't remember what I did yesterday or what I had for dinner, but I'll tell you exactly what my father said, and that is. You feed the animals first, Hannes. Okay. And then the adults. But my point right. are the that's kids. why your father <laughs> slaughtered so many people. Wait, that was a different podcast. But no, but there, it is interesting when you get older how there are certain things that come back. And Jonathan Winters, I've listened to him on a few yeah. different people, you know, interviewing him, and uh, a few things just keep coming out. And well, he, he kind of like stunning. to me, of course, you keep you know seeing him and you keep seeing clips. It's like he was kind of like Humphrey Bogart in a way, which is that Humphrey Bogart was doing modern acting at the time that other people were doing Stylized stage acting, acting like this. See, see yeah, see. See, see I like, tell you. And so Twice. Jonathan Winters was doing stuff in 1961 yeah. that is completely contemporary to today because he was literally 60 years, 50 years ahead of his time. Well and what did he and, and not only ahead of a time, he invented the next time. Right. Yeah, he he formatted the era for countless comedians. I right. just, oh sure. I just have to say, I did one of the things I read was that he had just very recently there had been something in the Santa Barbara paper about businesses in Santa Barbara complaining to I like the newspaper that Jonathan Whistler's to amuse himself in his old age would just make prank phone calls. <laughs> that he would not record, no. just and no one was listening. He would just call businesses in Santa Barbara and just fuck with them, <laughs> and just for an hour on end. And they were like, I at first they're like, oh so okay, much. we figured out it's Jonathan Winters. After like, enough already. I heard in his bedroom the ceiling was covered in model planes. That's right. That's interesting, isn't it? That is like a know, child. And uh, but he because of that, and I, I I would bring him up airplanes go get him a big plane and bring it up. Cause cool. In honor of my dad, because my dad was promised a fork-tailed devil P-38 Lightning uh, in <laughs> 1940 <laughs> to sign up uh, with the Army, because the Army was the Air Force then. It was all one Army. Oh, army Air Force. Yeah, yeah, I remember Ar- that from USAAF. World War II And uh, so he signed up. He's looking at that poster with the guy, thumbs up, and the you know the Jerry stamps on yeah. the side of the yeah. plane there. And he, uh, uh, he uh, goes, uh, this has got to be 41. So he, he goes in, and uh, they sign him in. He signs on the dotted line, and then they go, beautiful. And he goes, so when do I get to the airfield? And he goes, wait a minute, how tall are you? 6'4". Oh, no, you can't be in an airplane. Wow. They can't even close the lid on your head. No, we're putting you in the 103rd. So wow. he went over and became a Band of Brothers guy. You and know, that's it. On foot. But he'd Done hear deal. the roar going overhead. So I guess after that, he built planes and always had them. And so I, I kept some stuff and handed them on to Jonathan. But it is interesting. To my to, other dad. To work in the airline industry. There was something about height and weight and things like totally. that. Uh, even when I was a flight attendant for a while, and it was all about, well, at the time, they said that you had to keep your weight down so you could get out of the exit window. So if you were too heavy, you couldn't get out of the exit window That's but like right. at that time i know but i could only weigh 119 and now i weigh like 125 so now oh. i could not <laughs> see what i mean so the, wear it well oh well, well i don't know about that but uh all right i have two more questions for you and then right. i want to play some shotgun story worthy if you would mm. okay here's two here's the first question you drowned when you were seven years old yeah i was out off of uh, cape cod mom's reading her look magazine and uh, undertow to rip tie just pulled my legs out you're swimming it's alone. Quick, it's just like a couple of hands grab you. And one part of the current's going into the beach, and it makes a loop-de-loop and goes boop, and sandwich, like abrates against the other layer that's going in the opposite direction for the wash away of the sand. And the sand part just goes boom, pulls my feet out, and down I go, and yanks me out as a big one, like a grabber of a wave, and pulled me out. And, uh, and I'm... And you know, so that scene from Private Ryan where the guys with the packs get off the LTV oh, and... God. And the, the bam, 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 and then down again. Yeah. That traumatizes me because that's those are the phase where I was dying. It was that that you silence, can hear it, yeah. silence, mop, you know, and trying to come up again. And then she looks up after oh. I'm already dead. She goes out. She swam like a torpedo because she was an excellent swimmer from birth. I was never a great swimmer, and I don't know. I mean, this is the story she tells me later. All I know is I'm above, looking at her, looking down, push on my chest. And I, I didn't feel my own emotions yet. I felt way better than I felt a moment before. I didn't want to fucking feel anything after. I just, this is, this is where I am right now. There's like 30 feet in the air. This is better than before. 
So I always trust, that's why I'm fearless about the sky. You can put me in a biplane, cut the engine, I'll bring it in, you know? Wow. I don't care, because I trust the sky. That was safety after the, the underwater part. And so... Uh, Were you on a swimming beach? Yeah, they, so they say. But was back then, lifeguard? this is so long ago. I know, but there was no, no, no lifeguard. I mean, no, so nothing like that. Yeah. So you basically had an out-of-body yeah. experience. Yeah, there were houses behind us. They, you know, it's like, you and, know. And do you think that that right then and there changed stuff for you? I mean, that, that Maybe. you thought, hey, you know what, whatever. There's certain things I'm less afraid of. Right. Uh, but it was my mother's angst, her anguish, that I felt almost umbilically. It shuddered me. And I felt all her, oh, my God's. Wow. And then I went, oh, I don't like this. Boom. And I went back and shut it off and all coughed up the water and I was back. Oh, my gosh. That's a heck of a memory. Yeah. It must have been like second I don't grade. remember the drowning part because I don't want to, I guess. I locked it out. Right. But I remember that I'm pretty clear about the other part. Right. Because the relief part you're not traumatized about. Right. The bad part you're traumatized. So you erase that and you're part. you're seeing your But mother. I kept this, this, the part that felt good again. <sighs> Uh, all right, that, that's an intense thing. And let me ask you, uh, Hannes and I both took years of acting classes with Brian Reese. Love Brian and Reese. You, and you taught for Brian Reese. Yeah, that's right. And we the are Brian huge Reese fans. Method. Brian yes. Reese yeah, and we yeah. are huge fans. Can cut you just to the, explain to the folks out there, uh, Brian Reese? Want to cut it down? Uh, Brian Reese. How do you break it down? Break well, it down. As I say, you know, scene study class is where you work six weeks on a theater scene with your. Um, your your back rub and shoulder rub partner <laughs> from class. And front rub if you... you front rub. Yeah, right, right. Your, your makeup, makeup partner. partner and the guy that always needs to take his shirt off in every scene. Right. Uh, and, or the that's girl his, who needs to take her shirt off in every scene. Which, that's uh, his mentals. actor's choice, yeah. yeah. Um, but the... Uh, uh, you don't have... When you get an audition, you don't have six fucking weeks. You got no. you got 45 minutes holding uh, a printer paper on your steering wheel while you're looking down at red lights and running it in your head till you can get it by the time you park. Exactly. And so he did what would be six weeks of all that stuff and just busts it down into your class time. And you get it and you have to get it. So like the, the scene studies dial up and this is DSL. Brian Reese's DSL scene study. Mm -hmm. And he just, and one of the great secrets is he is, he says, your subconscious knows what it's doing. Just talk. Right. Don't act. Don't put everything into it. Don't put it, don't, don't put everything into it. Right. Just be able to say, here's your pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And the, people you'll are get the always... guy, here's your pizza. People are he like. used to the... say, yeah, you're the guy who was, like, yeah, people are always like, you know what? I'm sure if I do this pizza delivery to the table one line good enough they'll spin me off a of fraser the pizza guy to be the guy who delivers pizza yeah. Yeah, at like everybody's people, table they don't yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're memorizing and working on big drunk scenes and breakdown scenes and scenes that they'll never ever get cast for especially just trying to break through That's right. and they can't even say here's practical. your pizza and they're trying they're they're trying to be like this role that maybe tom cruise will play but you'll never play right so, so when you when you see those people come through the acting class, because you would have a class of what thirty students, yeah. and you see how naive people are, yeah. and do you feel sorry for them? Do you want to just give them their money and say go back to Ohio? <laughs> what do you say? No, each one is a challenge. Each one is a challenge, and I want to do. Uh, whenever I taught, I wanted to do Brian Wright. I wanted to crank every last one of them out, and if they had a different set of conditions, making it hard for them to understand it, that's my puzzle, not theirs. As teacher, I have to have 25 different ways to say one thing. Right, because everybody's hearing it differently. And in the English language... They had a different childhood than mine. Yeah. They're formatted to hear the whole setup afterwards differently. i got to figure that out, or I'm not good enough at my job yet. Right. They taught me. So, Brian, one thing I remember he always said to us when you're auditioning is if the director tells you to do something, you know what, you got to do that a little bit more warmly if you could. Then you should repeat that direction. More because, warmly, yes, sir. Because the odds are... Yeah, if you repeat it, perhaps you'll do it. Because then I might say back, okay, so you want me to do it just more standoffish? And he goes, no, 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 I didn't say standoffish. I said more warmly. For me, that means yeah. that. And then you have to decide mm -hmm. what does that mean because a lot of words in the English language are homonyms. Is that true, Hannes Finney? They certainly That's are. Right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Hamana, hum, hamana, 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 <laughs> hamana, 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 hamana. No, yes, they are. My point is, Brian Reese has the best acting <laughs> yes. school in all of Los Angeles. And if people come Love out to LA, Brian. they should go to Brian you know, Reese maybe we Acting can get him Studio. R E I S E. Yes. Brian Reese, yeah, R E I S E. Because he yeah. teaches you how to do what was. I love the stories of like, uh, this is my favorite one, was a guy who was in uh, Pearl Harbor, directed by Michael Bay. And there were Michael, no Hawaiians in that movie, by the way. Thank no you. Hawaiians? Of course. <laughs> they, they, yeah, the, the only acting direction that the guy heard the entire production 
was these guys are in the water, they're getting shot at or something, or they're jumping back on the ship, and Michael Bay looks at him and he goes, can you make it more bitchin'? And that was the only quote-unquote, everything else was about the camera. He didn't speak to the actors. He didn't give them, here's your character. It was, that was it. That was the whole thing. Can you transform into a Camaro? <laughs> yes. No? And so, but right. Rick, what do you say to actors, though? Because they do, they do think that they should have, you know, a backstory on the, on the, on the, on the mm. character they're playing. And maybe that mm. is important if it's a true character. But, I mean, wh- how do you explain to actors, you know, look, if you're a waiter in, in, in a restaurant and, and, the, and the manager says, take the hamburger to table three, then you just take the hamburger to table three. Don't do anything else. How Remember do you explain Remember the scene? That? I explain it like this. Rent Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I love that movie. And Rick can speed ahead to the scene <laughs> where... Uh, Pacino corner Spacey in the supply room for blowing the deal on the phone and goes, you cunt, you fuck, you company man. And he tells him off and it's profile shot of Pacino just shredding it and complete straight into the camera, hang dog Spacey blinking and absorbing. And who steals the scene? Yeah. Spacey becomes the lighthouse in the storm. And that's the lighthouse in the storm theory. Just be centered. And what? And when people will have a tendency to watch the, the harsh part, but they'll be thinking, what would I do were I absorbing that? And they will lock yeah. on the person taking it in. And that's why so much of acting is good listening. Yeah. Because yeah, a somebody... lot of times on a one hour, the guy's got such a giant chunk of dialogue, they got to cut to you blinking and listening. And you better be fucking listening. Yeah, yeah you better be doing You better, something. your eyes better register that when he said right. the commissioner just. <laughs> Said that you know we're, this guy's killing cops on the street, and uh, and we don't have one single lead, and you're our only detective that can get it, and I and I want your badge if you can't. My heart's thumping now. Yeah, right. I do love Kevin Spacey. I'll say that. Oh, isn't the House of Cards awesome? He's amazing. Yeah, on the new Netflix, Netflix is a yeah. network now. On Netflix, Netflix has They're a network, and, and YouTube is a network. Amazon has a network. Yeah, and the networks are figuring out. Oh shit, we better. networks are like. I know we'll get Jimmy Fallon to replace Jay Leno. That'll solve everything. Well, I hope like, it does good though, because you know what, well, Jimmy, no. you want to talk about impressions? Yeah, Jimmy Fallon is one of the best impressionists on earth. Hello, he does Neil Young earth. almost better than Neil Young. He's, but there's he does impressions. No one does. He does them. Close your eyes. You're there. Yeah, good. Uh, and I, I collect and admire uh, that art form like crazy. And so he's one of the tops, and he doesn't get the props he deserves for it. Oh, he soon will. He no, soon I mean, will. yeah, but as an impressionist, they're oh, not, saying, see, they're not giving him the added credit. Of the, if there's a hall of fame of impressionists, Frank Gorshin has to be in there. No well, one maybe remembers when him, the show loves starts, him anymore. Then they'll I'm, add more. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe he'll be doing more. He'll have yeah, to. it'll be bigger. Night to night. Wait, he'll, can I, I just have one thing I have to say, because every time we have somebody who was ever on Seinfeld on, we have to mention this. Yeah. You were, of course... Yeah. The Drake. Love the Drake, hate the Drake. Love the Drake, hate the Drake. <laughs> ha- handicap, <laughs> handicap parking spot episode. Oh, my yeah, yeah. God. That big screen episodes. TV went to me yes. and uh, and uh, Brian Dennehy's daughter, Elizabeth Dennehy, the marvelous actress. And uh, we That's had the awesome. horrible breakup. And then they had to get the TV back to, uh, oh, Hey. Oh, and Elizabeth Dennehy is <laughs> here. <laughs> Brian you know, we're actually <laughs> Bill updating. Daly's here. Is that, you bet your life, or this is your life. This is the new version of this is your life. And we had Toby Hassan, who was the love. Wiz. Oh, we love so Toby So we had Hass. the Wiz and the Drake. That's so we're exactly going, right. And Danny Gould, so we're going awesome. Right. Toby, I hear, shreds it in uh, 42. He's in awesome 42. in 42. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Good for you, man. Yeah, Go no get him, Huss. It. He's a good man. Get him, I love dog. Toby Huss. Okay, let me add one more thing, and then we're going to play Shotgun Story with you. I loved your interview with Dane Cook. I have to say that. Thanks. Uh, well, you were interviewing Dane Cook, and the, and the two of you started talking about how, you know, now um, there is so much capability of anybody to do any show they want mm. to. We and owe him a debt so of gratitude. If you're, if you're no booking yourself man. online right. now, so you, you don't he wait. helped pave that road for you. Yeah, he did, yeah, he, with MySpace, et cetera. And you don't wait to be found I'm, anymore. Now you go get it. That's it. Uh, there's I a use lot a lot of, people, of what, he, what he designed. Yeah, a lot of people trying to direct, uh, connect directly to fans. And so what do you think about all these podcasts that are coming out? I mean, the cream rises at the yeah. top. I mean, there what was, do you, you know, there was a lot of everybody. count off all the TV shows and how many made it. Right. That's the same. It's the next version of a radio show or a TV show. It's just and the next thing. 
the people will love it or not love it or right. it'll, it'll find its way. You know, there's a lot of shows on some networks. They just play to a certain age group and they get renewed and renewed with this, this tiny little chunk of well, numbers Reba, forever. Yeah. Reba has well, been around Jim forever. Jim Beaver, who we've had on the show, a wonderful actor, was on uh, Supernatural for like seven years. Seven years on the of WB, this, and this percentage, like, yeah. Nobody over 30 watches right. Supernatural. Right. But I, so I love right. the idea of more podcasts, more people. Everybody jump in, man. Let's do this thing and Why we'll not? all whittle it down and we'll all, the America will speak. It'll figure Figure I, it out. I It'll don't think variety out. is a problem. I don't think so either. No. I'm glad to say that. Well, a lot of people seem to think there might be too many shows, et cetera, but I don't you think just, so. You can just not watch them. Yeah, you shake it out. You don't want to watch don't it? Listen. Don't watch it. All right. Hey, yeah. would you like to play a little shotgun story with me? Spin it, baby. Music can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Storyworthy. The game where our storyteller spins the storyworthy wheel of truth and tells a true one-minute story about the topic it lands on. So everybody, say it with me. Spin that wheel! California. Well, uh, uh, I remember the, the first time I got a... Uh, a, a, a jaywalking ticket and this was in 1982 i'm crossing hollywood boulevard a cop bounces his motorcycle up onto hollywood boulevard and corners me and says uh sir i need to see your id the id yeah i'm just got up from new york where jaywalking is expected so i hand him my id and he starts clicking out a pen and writing me a ticket and he says what are you doing here mr overton i said i'm a comedian and he said oh yeah <laughs> tell me a joke so i went Okay, here's one. I'm crossing the middle of Hollywood Boulevard, and a cop gives me a track of ticket when I don't have a car around me. How's that? Is that pretty funny? And I just watched him dig that pen into the ticket. He made three triplicate copies. He was grinding the ball right off the pen. Rip. And I was thinking, oh, it's expensive. I hope the joke was worth it. It was. I got a lot of laughs with it. Have you, uh, have you had any uh, traffic tickets out here? I've had a few. Moving violations? Well, yeah. The, the most recent is the uh, fuck face photo mailed yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, knowing you... it flash that duh. You mean when you go through a red light? Yeah, when the photo snaps you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. yeah. Got, no one pulled me over. I just got a photo of my you, face. Have you had any problems with the texting or the talking on the phone? Because they're really cracking down on that, man. I haven't. Good. That's good. But that's I, why I don't ride a motorcycle anymore. Oh. And I was an avid, you know, when I was a biker. You yeah, were yeah, a yeah, Harley I was an rider. Avid biker. I was of all kinds of things. And I switched over to a BMW motorcycle. Oh. Because uh, I crashed my bike on the 405 once. So I had a Harley. I was cruising along my FXRS. I'm just going along. And this car with the stubby little tubey tires comes along and it changes the way you steer. One of those cars snaps like a Lotus in traffic. Oh it's touched gosh. the wheel and you're in the next lane. And so he miscalculated, came into my lane, banged my front wheel with a thump and he puts it in and, and it puts you into what's called a tank slap. Tong, 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 and the fork just starts going into an S weave and there's really no recovering from oh a tank God. slap. You have to lay it down. Now here's the secret. When you, when you guys, any bike owners out there, take it from old Uncle Rick. Here's what you do. <laughs> you have to lock the front and rear brake and crank, grab hold of those handlebars and crank it hard, push your right hand out, pull your left hand in and let the bike dirt flat track forward of you because uh. the last thing you want with your inertia is to stop, head. and then bang, the bike hits you on top of you going over the top of it. And then it's still going because its weight and so smashes you into you. Ahead the bike of most, you. The most of the, of the impact. In front of you. So Put it behind. in front of you because you'll stop first. You don't weigh as much. So that's the whole point. So bang, and it goes down, and I'm watching it skiddity, skiddity, spin, spin, spark, spark, and everything goes into slow motion because your brain hyper accelerates. That's why it looks in slow motion. Your comparison is your brain's running on, you know, yeah. Yeah. 78 now. And yeah. so... Uh, and I, and I remember my head going bang sideways oh, onto the pavement with the helmet. And I hear the rip, rip, rip. They're like the weird little stoppity things. Oh, and yeah. The, 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 the lane, the, the lane, lane change It was like the, 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 the plates and the cement. And so <laughs> then I stop and, uh, and I hear the uh, smoke, smoke, rubber, rubber, smoke, smoke. We're great cars fishtailing to get out of the way of me. And, uh, uh, and I'm thinking, oh. This is how I die after yeah, all this you time. Hit at yeah. any minute. So I thought it was the other one. Maybe it's this one. And then I hear this sign behind me. Is this sound behind me goes. And I turn around and it's the emblem 
of a BMW grill on a car. Like, like raising Arizona close to my head, right? Uh, like they shot it in reverse and backed away. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so uh, the, here's what the driver in the car sees. He sees one hand like, punk. Then the other hand, bunk on his hood, and this smoldering, like half moon of a helmet with smoke coming off it, rising up <laughs> over his hood with this blanched face. And he, he and I were you. blanched, and he's on the phone going, Oh, fuck, I didn't kill him. Woo! Yeah, he's alive. <laughs> Woo! Like that. Wow. But his car saved my life because it had ABS. And so after that, I bought the motorcycle that had ABS because why are you on the most vulnerable thing? Without your and brakes locking. The no computer, when every car, modern car around yeah. you has computer stopping it at five times the normal human rate. And so uh, you're a dead man. And now with texting, I figure like the last thing I would see before I'm dead is <laughs> like me bashing slow motion through the windshield into the passenger back seat yeah. this way and him just texting in that slow, oh shit face, oh, watching me God. sail yeah. through the car. And uh, my dad's gonna kill yeah. me. WTF. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Listen, you still ride a bike? No, I love it, but uh, right now I'm not. I just, uh, I was taking a, a bike. Was my a bike was the civilian version of what the police have that BMW yeah. that with the up and down windshield, you know, wow, the sleek cool. one. It was the, yes, they sell the civilian one. So I had that. I figure it's the safest bike, right? And I was flat tracking it uh, boom, up to the sides of cars. Hey! Boom, 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 boom. Hey! Two, three, four, five. Huh? Look up. Like that. Wow. That's your reflex? How dead am I if yeah. that was your reflex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about now they've got a lot of trikes. That's a big thing. Yeah. Trikes. Mm -hmm. You enjoy that or is that like an old man uh, motorcycle? Well, <laughs> so, uh, my, my legs, are, I can still hold up a bike, but... Uh... No, I, <laughs> I can still hold up a bike, honey, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's is that what, what the what kids that, are calling it? No, but yeah. a lot of guys that have a blown out leg. Oh, yeah. is that right? They use the trike. Yeah, they can't, hold, they can't get the bike back up. Well, by, that, by, yeah. the, by the time you've got the three wheels and it's as big as a car, would you just get in a the car? They want just, the old feeling, the old, but one of the legs, you know, a lot of vets yeah. get the trike because they had a blown up leg, you know, and Last why thing. shouldn't a guy with a fake leg be able to cruise around or something like that? It, hey, that's man, the only way he's I'm, getting away with it, though. I'm not a racist. I have no problem with that. No, no. <laughs> Don't look at me. All right, you guys, we got to wrap this up right about now. Hannes, do you need to add anything? What no, do you I want? I just wanted to say that I always, it's funny, you're talking about the Harley, you had a Harley and thing it's a bunch like, of harleys I and then bmws because harley is made in milwaukee and it's the only bike made in america i want it to be the best bike in the world but i don't really think it is from all the stories i hear it's not the safest it's the bike. sexiest bike it's not it's the most the rich, technologically like advanced yeah, it's bike. Not, yeah, bike or it's the, not. like if you have a harley you're, you've got to be wealthy i mean in my mind yeah, yeah but well, it's, well there's a cheap version of it and it and it resells differently than a japanese bike a japanese bike is like a, a bic lighter and when it's done it's done uh, but a Harley's like a Zippo, and when it's worn out, you replace everything so you got the old classic Zippo. Man, yeah. you can just break it down so easily, Rick Overton. Well, I appreciate I that. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Really, what a pleasure. Thank you, Mine. yes, yes. All right, you guys, thank we're going to break this down right about now. I'd like to thank Jorge Reyes. He's the sound engineer here on the show. Woo. And, of course, Joe Slutsky helps us out every darn week. Woo. And on behalf of our storyteller tonight, Rick Overton, and, of course, you, Hannes Finney, my dear friend and co-host... My name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to StoryWorthy on iTunes and visit the StoryWorthy website at storyworthypodcast.com.
Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Hi, it's Carl Deichler, CEO of Beachbody. And I'm giving away 10,000 free memberships a week to try our amazing Beachbody fitness and nutrition programs. Pick any program and just follow it step by step, like our 21-day fix program or the ab shredding muscle burns fat program. Plus, there's free support in personalized fitness groups with our community of over 2 million members. Now is the time, so don't wait. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. This week on RVER, sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Oh, that new doctor is dropped at gorgeous. Oh, please, he's just another RV League educated surgeon with good hair. No, he's different. Nurses, we got a classy motorhome with a detached driver's side mirror. Meet me in the OR. Stat. Right away, doctor. No, 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 she's on break. I'll handle this one. Oh, you conniving little... When your RV really needs saving, Progressive has you covered. See if you could save with a leader in RV insurance. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates covered subject to policy terms.